Welcome everybody to the American Space Museum. I'm Mark Marquette, and we're so glad you're with us to stay curious today. You know, for over 20 years, the American Space Museum and our nonprofit foundation has been preserving the birth of the American Space Age right here in Brevard County. And we're going to talk about the rocket launches in Brevard County today, as we've got one tonight, Starlink satellites. We've got one at about 349 exactly in the morning on Friday with four crew members going to the ISS. And we're going to talk about the crew today. And we're going to talk with a true space geek, John Borelli, is here from Limestone, New York, just south of Buffalo. We look forward to John sitting down here next to me and telling me a little bit about some of his uh, uh, getting astronaut autographs and other things he loves. We love talking to you space lovers out there. We've had many of you on the show here. We just had... Um, uh, of course, our UCAC brothers are on here. Uh, we've got Gary Gerald, our uh, peanut and Vidalia onion farmer in Georgia has been on our show. So we're going to look forward to John Borelli. You may have seen his name making comments here in just a few minutes. Marty, uh, does this, uh, this picture, our, our green screen back here, uh, you know when that was, correct? Correct. I know when that was. Well, when was it, Marty? One year ago today, John. Uh, That's right. Uh, everyone's hair on fire for the launch of all, of Artemis One, uh, and I'm gonna we're gonna relive a little bit of that fun time in the middle of the night at Space View Park. Which, though the launch didn't go off, it was just for me a day I'll never remember. There's few days that you really remember, you remember in your life, remember. huh? Just say it's a day I'll never remember. It's a day I'll never remember. That's right. It's a day I'll never forget. All right. Marty, you sit over here and I'll sit there. We'll see how things come out of your mouth for a change there. And it's thank you, Marty, for correcting me. It's a day I'll never forget. And there's so many few of those in our lives. But though the launch didn't happen, it was just an electric atmosphere. We had two German television stations there, three local stations, Marty selling T-shirts and coins. And just uh, my friend Gary Studi, you'll see him doing an, uh, an interview. He's the, one of the world's experts in plants. And this is a picture I took across the Indian River after the scrub, after Ozzy Osbourne, rest in peace, said scrub. And everybody kind of hung around for a little bit because it was a gorgeous sunrise against this these cumulus clouds over the Atlantic Ocean and and right there, no, right there, yeah, there's the Artemis rocket right there, bathed in light. We eventually got her off in November. They had to pull it back into the VAB because of a hurricane and then back out. And John Borelli, our guest today, is going to talk a little bit about that with us. But, hey, we've got some birthdays going on here today. And when there's two or more, oh, I'm going to tear up our studio. I got my party hat on for these astronauts today. Two real good guys. I've met one of them. Uh, David Wolf is uh, 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 67 years old today. His nickname's Bluto. And Tony Antonelli is 56, is 56 years old today. So David Wolf, 67. There's David Wolf right there explaining one of his uh, flights. Uh, this guy was born in Indianapolis, Indiana on August 23rd, 1956. He has four missions and 168 days in space, 128 of which were on the Russian Mir space station. A six-time spacewalker, uh, Wolf is one of the two dozen Purdue knots from that Indiana college of Purdue University. And uh, in 1997, he became the first American to vote in space while on the Russian space station Mir. There, I believe he's in the, uh, uh, probably in the uh, below deck there in the space shuttle. But uh, he's one guy I'd really like to meet, Marty. Uh, he uh, also played a key role in today's cooperation with Russia on the International Space Station. Uh, despite two Americans experiencing a fire and then a cargo ship collision. And they weren't going to let him go up there, but the last minute they decided to. And as I understand it, the decision was made in orbit, whether to just really let him go or not in there after uh, Jerry Leninger experienced a, a fire and then a cargo ship collided. And I'm not thinking who watched that. Tom Jones, maybe? 
And there, but there's a Tony Anthony Dominic Anthony Antonelli is 56 years old today, born August 23rd in 1967 in the Motor City, Detroit, Michigan. But he's raised in Fayetteville, North Carolina. I've been in both those towns. I like Fayetteville better for sure. Uh, naval aviator Antonelli was a pilot twice on the shuttle program. STS-119 in 2009 on Discovery and STS-132 Atlantis in May 2010. Both trips to the International Space Station doing some hard hat work up there. In fact, the uh, 132 took up the last of the solar panels there at the end of the program. I met Antonelli. In fact, uh, he was uh, visiting a bunch of kids from Fayetteville, North Carolina, at a local hotel where I was doing a stargaze. And all of a sudden, he's looking at the planet Jupiter uh, through my telescope, and he'd never seen uh, the planet Jupiter through a telescope before. So glad to show you that, Tony. Marty, he'll probably come back to the Space Center, we hope. And he's one of the Atlantis astronauts, and we have a beautiful poster for him to sign there. There's Tony up in space as a pilot uh, on the right-hand seat and had the shuttle progress beyond STS-135. He no doubt would have been a commander of a space shuttle. Good. Uh, uh, happy birthday, guys. David Wolf, 67. Bluto, out of Popeye's, his nickname. And Anthony Antonelli is 56 today. So, all right, we're going to talk about this group of, of astronauts that we're going to launch uh, in the middle of the night, Thursday night, Friday morning. That, of course, is the Crew 7, SpaceX Crew 7. This is the seventh crewed operational NASA commercial crew flight of the Crew Dragon, the third of this spacecraft called Endeavour, with an O-U-R, of course, the the English version to honor Captain Cook's uh, 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 ship, Discovery ship. This is Marty. This is the 11th overall crewed orbital flight for SpaceX. Good for them. I mean, did you have, have, have remember the first one with Demo uh, uh, Two with uh, Benkin and Hurley? What a day that was! Exciting in the afternoon. Uh, uh, around the uh, there so they've done 10 after that and we have going to space uh, in the left let's uh, right hand side there you can tell she's a marine because of her patches the marine colors that is jasmine uh, mobelli m-o-g-h-b-e-l-i we're going to feature each of these astronauts quickly she's the one at nasa astronaut and across from her is the pilot andreas morgensen of denmark one isa astronaut all right. And then above uh, uh, Morganson there, he's been to space before. Mogali's not. She's a rookie commander. He's been to space. And then behind him is a rookie Russian from Roscosmos, Konstantin Borisov, on his first flight. And then on the right is Japan's uh, Satoshi Fuakawa. And this is his second trip to space. Uh for JAXA, and uh, let's look at them. Well, let's talk about the mission here just a little bit. They're going to go up uh, and dock with the uh, International Space Station on the 26th, so launching on the 25th, sort of, so it's about a day trip there. They're going to spend 180 days in space as part of uh, the Crew-69. Thank you, Carlton Bailey, our partner here at the American Space Museum, for providing us the crew walkout that he went out to Sunday. The crew arrival, uh, they don't have masks on. That's interesting. Uh, but they're, they're at the crew quarters in the Armstrong building, formerly the uh, ONC Operations and Checkout. Uh, and here's another uh, glamour shot there sideways that Carlton took there. You got the, the Russian on the left, uh, the uh, uh, Borisov, then you got Andre, Andreas Morganson of ESA, and then of course Jasmine and uh, Satoshi there. So uh, we wish them luck. They're getting ready in anticipation to go. So We've got two rookies going, Marty, and two experienced astronauts. One rookie's a woman. So by our tally of human beings who've orbited the Earth, this will put 603 up on the board. 
when the Russian gets in space, uh, Borisov, and Jasmine will be the 74th woman to orbit the Earth. All the suborbitals, Marty and I call Karmanots, and uh, you can keep track of those because there's going to be hundreds of them uh, pretty quick. So uh, here is the rocket on the pad out there. Uh, the Crew Dragon Endeavor on his third flight. I did look up how many times this booster's flown. Doesn't look too sooty, but I would want one uh, that's that's not been flown at all, or maybe just once or twice. Um, and there's the patch, the Crew Patch. And Marty will be selling T-shirts at Space View Park if you're locally there. Uh, Marty, God bless you for getting up at midnight or uh, to go out there, but we also have them in our museum, and our guest today's got one on, so uh, we'll, uh, but uh, beautiful patch, the dragon, the, the main theme of the crew dragon, the astronauts' names there, you see the Russian in Russia, you've got uh, Fuku, Fukawa in uh, Japanese, uh, a mission uh, looking at the earth uh, from space, of course, emphasizing, but nothing else there, so kind of a simple one, I like the the dragon's got the spines on it there. And, of course, uh, you know, dragons are extinct, aren't they, Marty? Have you seen any dragons in a zoo, Marty? <laughs> no, not lately. But also that dragon is in the shape of a seven. Well, well, well. Thanks, Marty. Cool. It is in the shape of a seven. Let's make it bigger there. There we go. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, the head of the dragon's a seven there. For the crew seven there. Thank you for pointing out that little what they call Easter eggs in artwork. And there is the crew taken out of Hawthorne, California, where the headquarters for SpaceX are. But they're building some facilities like crazy around here. Um, and so that is the stylish uh, SpaceX space suit. Uh, Elon Musk supposedly designed that himself to, to look a, a, a little attractive there. So... Uh, and here is the uh, a SpaceX Crew Dragon dock to the International Space Station. Uh, that's actually the the Japanese module because you got the porch out on the end there, where they take things in and out. That's Kibo or part of Kibo, I think, or maybe not. I don't see the Kibo on the side, but there she is. Of course, an important part of it is the service module on the end that doesn't return. And you see the hatch is like a little gumdrop above the silver there that's opened up there. So very interesting look there that an astronaut took. And uh, of course, this is going to be part of Expedition 69. They're going to be up for 180 days, segueing into the 70th expedition in the 22 years that ISS has been continuously occupied. We're staring at 23 years in November. Isn't that something that if you're 20 years old, you've never breathed a breath on Earth, that somebody's not breathing a breath uh, orbiting the Earth. I think that's so cool to think about as we approach 23 years. And of course, the 70, very stylized in this very simple piece of artwork there. Well, let's look at Jasmine Mogbilly, Mo Mo M-O-G-H-B-E-L-I. Um, she is Persian, uh, born to Persian parents in Bad Nauman, West Germany, to an Iranian family. That's what Persian is, folks. They're Iranian. They're not. There's no Persian country. Uh, she's a smarty pants. Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Uh, Naval Test Pilot School. Uh, flown in Afghanistan. All right. Mind you, this is a rookie commander of a spaceship. All right. What respect she must have uh, and skills that she's done. And you're going to see something in a minute that really impresses me. Uh, well, let's just show it right now. This this badass helicopter that she's uh, flown, an AH-1 Super Cobra pilot, one of the, and, and all those assault pilot uh, helicopters, just an amazing piece of aviation. Uh, she was a helicopter test pilot with the VMX-1 at the Marine Corps Air Station in Yuma, Arizona, URA. And uh, of course, uh, Marty and I figured it out finally that when you've got the gold and red of the Marines on your patch there, you are a Marine there. So uh, looking forward to her. She was uh, picked uh, in 2017, been waiting uh, just uh, six years to fly, that's all. 
we could be looking at the Artemis commander for the moon landing, or maybe the commander to, to walk on the moon, or maybe a commander of the uh, uh, the gateway uh, lunar station. So, uh, so we expect big things out of uh, Jasmine Mokbilly here, and uh, you know, Godspeed her and her command there. Let's look at the next astronaut who's the pilot. This is Andreas Morgensen. Uh, he flew up to the International Space Station for a quick 10-day flight on the Soyuz TMA-18 spacecraft back in 2015. So he's been waiting eight years to get back to space. He's going up on his second flight. Like I said, he's from Copenhagen, Denmark. Uh, he's his first Dan Danish astronaut to fly in space. And uh, though he's got 10 days in space, he's been on the International Space Station. I bet he's anxious to get up there and see how much has changed. And he will end up being the ISS Expedition 70 commander. All right. Now, Marty, do you remember talking to our your ESA friends uh, that they give names to the expeditions that they're up there? Uh, of course, I'm not going to remember any of them. I'm thinking of one I'm going to have on my wall up there. Uh, but his is going to be Huggin, H-U-G-I-N-N, -N, and they have some meaning uh, of uh, what they're investigating on the ISS. So you're looking at Expedition 70 Commander there, Andreas Morgensen. <coughs> and another crew member is, of course, the Russian Konstantin Borisov. And uh, his, his occupation is Test Cosmonaut. All right, let's see. He's about 23 years old. Uh, so he's a... Uh, uh, no, he's not. He's, he's 43. Uh, he's uh, 39 years old, it looks like here, Marty, going to space. So he was a Cosmos since 2018. And uh, he will be the rookie going up and not much about him because he's a Russian. But once again, back up there, the cooperation, as we've heard time and time again, with Russia in the space station is not compromised by this uh, war they're having with Ukraine. Uh, everybody depends on each other's lives up there. And it is part of the Russian, where were we just here? I just, I just heard that uh, in the talk yesterday uh, by Terry, White, uh, Terry Wilcott, who visited the Russian space station twice, uh, that Part of the ISS agreement with Russia is every there has to be a Russian on these commercial crew flights. So he's it. And finally, second time in space, Furukawa. 24 years he's been an astronaut with JAXA, which was formerly the National Space Development Agency of, of Japan. Uh, he's a surgeon. He spent 187, 67 days on Expedition 28-29. Uh, that was back in uh, 2011. He went up on a Soyuz spacecraft. Uh, he's been an aquanaut in the Nemo project down just south of us here in Key Largo. He's also been, Marty, an ESA caves, cave knot, uh, they call him, training in Sardinia, uh, which is a very serious uh, kind of uh, way that they try to get the feel for going back to the moon or uh, Mars even on there. So... Uh, Gosh, he's born in 64, so he's uh, he's uh, 59 years old. All right, so got some gray hair going up there. Spent another 180 days in space. That'll give him, uh, wow, 360 some, or, or no, 180. He'll be up there uh, over a year almost up there. Uh, and he was born in Yokohama, Kanawaga, Japan. So we wish that crew well. Got a comment, Marty. Yeah, I got a comment from Carlton Bailey. He says, tell Mark this is Ben's last name. I think that's the Ben he wants. Okay. Right, that's all right. I don't I don't what, what who's the Ben photographer Ben I was asking about. Uh so thank you. Thank you, Carlton there. Had a picture of his I wanted to share and not get sued, so I'm not sure I'm gonna use it or not. But um anyway, we're gonna bring up here right now, John. John Borelli, come on up here, John. Come on down, as they say on there, buddy. Welcome to Stay Curious, John. Great to see you. There, Very we nice. can see you real good up there. Is the camera up there? 
uh, John, just uh, thank you for reaching out to us. And uh, you've, uh, you've come to see a, a launch. You know how many launches you've seen. Uh, how, how, what, what launch is this going to be you're looking for? This will be 57 for me. Tonight. Tonight. And then 58, 58 for the grand final. Yeah, I was hoping to get to 60 while I was here, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. They've slowed down a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, John Borelli, there's your name up there, Space Geek, Limestone, New York. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do for a living and uh, where'd you grow up and how'd you get uh, I'm crazy about space? I've uh, been doing heating and air for 30 years. Mm -hmm. uh, in my hometown. A lot of heat up in New York. Maybe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mostly <laughs> heat. Very little AC up there. Right. You know how that is. Uh, but other than that, I lived in uh, St. Augustine for about almost 10 years, and that's where I went and seen a lot of the shuttles. Uh, I've seen 50 shuttle launches. Did you? Wow. Including Challenger. I never saw one. Exactly. And, right. uh, yeah. And now I'm just trying to see some more. People Good. go up. Yeah, 50 uh, shuttle launches. That's nothing to sneeze at, man. Well, it didn't seem like it was that many. Where would you watch most of them, John? Uh, well, I used to do AC maintenance, so I was the only guy that was allowed on the roof from <laughs> Jacksonville. Okay. So I would go up on the roof when there was a shuttle launch, and I would sit back and watch it. How did it look from 100 it miles away? It wasn't too bad. Mm -hmm. It wasn't too bad. You could see it. Yeah. You could watch it turn and all the other. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I knew when Challenger went and that something watched... was wrong. Yeah, yeah. I knew right after the turn Is that, that it right? wasn't right. Yeah. Uh, well, you're uh, down here. Uh, you say you come frequently, as, as frequently, of course, as anybody's wallet allows to, to, to exactly. travel. Exactly, exactly. Uh, with today's gas prices and so forth. Uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, you, you said that you stay out at Jetty Park is a real mm -hmm. popular place to stay yep. out. Very right nice Right beside park. the Cape Canaveral. So tell us a little bit about that experience. Uh, it's really nice because the pier is right there. So I can watch a rocket launch from the pier. And the next day, watch the booster come back in on the ship, mm -hmm. which is phenomenal. Yes, you know, we're going to see a, a, pic, a couple really of pictures. It's really crazy. Of that. Yeah, it's fun to sit out there on the, on, yep. the, on the big pier. A lot of people out there seeing that. Oh, yeah. They, yeah, the last time I was here... Oh, there must have been a hundred people out there. And, and you and, see it and, on the barge uh, that, that yep. they land on, uh, uh, whatever, what silly name he's got for that. Yeah, there's uh, a couple of them. I still love you. Or yeah, and, there's a couple and, of them. But it comes real slow. Yeah. And, and, and it's just... Got a tug towing it. Yeah, so. there's nothing on it. It's completely yeah. Yeah, it's robotic. A, yeah, it's amazing, yeah, isn't it? It's, it is, it is. Yeah, um, that's one of, one of the big things I'm looking forward to with this launch is... The crew launch is uh -huh. they're going to land back at LZ-1. Oh, okay. So I heard that. Be able, not only am I... Are you using acronyms to... there, John? Throw yeah, it at LZ. Okay, but... and it's landing zone. There you go. Landing okay. zone Thank 1. You. They have landing zone 2 for when they do the Falcon Heavy. Uh -huh. A boat can come back and land there. And this will be my first time watching it come back and land. It, oh, wow. It's yeah, be... I hope it's at night, yeah. Yeah. And, and really you're going to watch it, you said, it. at uh, Jetty Park, you think? Uh, no. For the crew, I'll oh. be at Banana Creek. Right. You, uh, this uh, John goes out to Kennedy Space Center, and uh, isn't that the best hundred and twenty bucks you ever spent? Oh God, with the yeah, it's, pets, it's right? two fifty, but it's well worth it. And like I, I know, always tell about the, the annual pass isn't two fifty. No. The, it's one hundred and twenty-five. But right. you're saying for two hundred fifty, yeah, you buy the extra buy the trips. extra ticket. Yeah, I and have a pass. I have a regular uh, pass that you I find they're very, very worth it. Oh uh, yes, a hundred percent. I've been there probably twenty times. Really? Yeah, at seventy-five dollars, you can do the math. You yeah. know what I mean? So, I think mine costs one sixty-five altogether. It's the uh, Atlanta pass. Right, but then you uh, you're, you're, but then, but you, then you can come in all year long. Right, you yeah. You them. never, you don't, you just it's show like them the badge. You don't pay no parking. Yeah. You don't pay for none of that. I believe we know. Right in. We've, I've seen you out there yeah. getting autographs yeah. before. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that'll be that'll be really interesting. It's a it's a we're gonna revisit like the middle of the night launch of Artemis One, and you can relive those down there. Well, let's just go to that here. We got Fuakawa there. Many of us, like you, John, put our punched a ticket and went uh, with the uncrewed Artemis right. uh, around the moon. Yep. Yeah, I was there. I sat through two scrubs. 
unfortunately, but I'll tell you what, it was very exciting, even if it was a scrub. Yes, that scrub, uh, a year ago today, August 23rd, we're going to relive that here uh, very briefly in a few minutes there. Uh, you took that picture. Yes. And, yes. Uh, you know, he's got his shot of Artemis 1 on the pad there, folks. And uh, where was this taken? Tell everybody. That was from Banana Creek. They were talking. Um, NASA had a couple of guys out there that were explaining different things and uh I'm, you probably know him but i don't know him by name mm -hmm. um i've seen him before i think his first name Believe is charlie or, yeah you know. i may not know there's so many great people out there at the right. space center right uh, yeah that that, yep. that that can tell it could be marty out there it could be yeah uh, uh, so many knowledgeable space workers out there uh and here was the scene at space view park okay the uh the the the, the rocket launch was going to be just right in in the dawn and you see dawn breaking there news crews everywhere it was really a magical time like i said a time that i will not forget because it was just so beautiful uh there's our uh, rocket hobo ozzy osband who passed away that's you tommy usiak on the left there uh trying to mess up my photograph there uh getting in front of ozzy uh but uh he passed away a couple weeks ago uh, I did talk to his brother today, and we're going to get some plans going in the fall for a true memorial. And Ozzy will be buried at the National uh, Cemetery, Marty, up in the Mims, because he was a servant. He was a, a veteran. Uh, there's some of the views there at the condos uh, next to the Space View Park. Uh, uh, everybody just on pins and needles until Ozzy yelled, Scrub! And, uh, you know, nobody left. Uh, it was just so magical. Uh, there is a uh, young lady, Molly. Uh, oh, I wrote Molly's name down and then set it away there. Where is... Um, Marty, I didn't grab my notes out of the... Molly Reed, that's who that young lady is. Uh, with the sun rising behind her, getting ready to do a broadcast there. Uh, thank you, Marty, in case I need something else on there. And uh, there's my friend... Uh, Gary Studi on the right being interviewed by the PBS station of uh, Germany that interviewed Marty during all this. We got all kinds of publicity for the mu museum. Uh, there you see actually the pad is to the left there. You just barely see the VAB off to the left over there. So, And then of course uh, the, uh, it got scrubbed and dawn breaking behind them cum cumulus clouds irresistible to any photographer like myself. So, But uh, you were... you. You were there with bells on, getting that yes. close. Yes. Looks like a nice thunderstorm yep. going over there. I think that passed us, actually. Uh, you can't really see off to the, the right there. There was uh, SpaceX's launch site. Uh-huh. Uh, and then, of course, on, my, on the other side was the uh, SLS all set up. You could see it beautiful from there. It was a really, really, really nice tour. The now, first was, time I've ever been out, actually, that close to the launch pads. They, you, oh, really? They, phenomenal. That, that's a stop for the shuttle yep. uh, tour that you would take out yep. there. Yeah, exactly. Yep. I've actually stood there. Yeah. In, uh, uh, seen they the said shuttle. you used to be able to go right out to the launch pad as long as the shuttle wasn't there. But Well, we're going to share with John here that uh, tell us a couple of things you'd like to, to collect. Uh, I'm an astronaut. Uh, autograph collector basically i've got probably uh i'm just going to guess and say 30 or 40 of them mm -hmm. around my house uh got nine well, of the moon walkers that you got woody yeah woody woody is a really woody really Spring. super nice guy if anybody ever goes there and and woody's there go ahead and get breakfast or lunch with him because his his talk is just phenomenal he talks about all kinds of stuff uh, Marty's got autograph. Marty's we're all autograph hunters out right. there, but mostly we want to get to know the astronauts a yeah. little bit well because yeah. that'll benefit our museum. Uh, Woody was here Sunday with some of his artifacts that he's going to put in a future auction. No kidding. With, uh, our I'm going to watch for that uh, one. Chuck Jeffrey. So he'll be having some stuff on there. Uh, yeah. Astronauts are finding it we're a good outlet to get rid of yeah. some of their stuff. I buy a lot. Uh, I buy a lot of stuff off of your guys' auction. Sweet. I look forward to it every single time it happens. Well, I've seen your name pop up. Marty, yep. you got anything to say about Woody? You've probably seen him talk more times than me. No, other than what John's saying, uh, 
he like a lot of all the other astronauts are just so open so friendly and a lot of good information yeah they are there you are with Kathy Thornton. Is this yep. her trip out here this that, week? That was this week, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I had, we sang I was, happy birthday to her Thursday. Did you? Yes, oh, good for you. Thursday. Yeah, she had a cake or something, right? Yeah. We yeah. took her a cake that out was there. Beautiful. Posted Very on nice. Facebook. Now yeah. that's uh, at the uh, at the four o'clock signing. Right. Yep. Uh, under Atlantis there. Right. Yep. And there's the gorgeous Atlantis. Yeah. Uh, Can't say enough about that. Yeah, John, just, just tell people that have never seen. They have a whole, they tell the story of the shuttle in reveal. Yeah. Uh, I mean. It's it's amazing. They have a screen and it looks like there's stars in it. And as it comes up, you see the shuttle and it just gives me goosebumps up my back. Every yeah, single good. time yeah, I see it. Me. And I've seen it 50 times. 50 times. Oh, wow. yeah. I've been there many, many, well, many, you many times. you can go in the back door in the bottom. You don't have to stand right. yep. in the presentation. Yeah, exactly. 50. I've probably seen it eight or nine times. And yeah. uh, I get goosebumps. Yeah. Uh, it is it's one amazing. of the most. I mean, we've all seen a lot of amusement parks. And everything like that. That's one of the and, and museums. And yeah. That is an unbelievable reveal of right. something. Because you don't yeah. know. You see the shuttle behind the scrim. Right. All right. And you think it's painted on the wall. Right. Yeah. And then they lift the wall up and yeah. there it is behind yeah. there. It's just it's amazing. I get to do thinking about it. It's yeah. awesome. It is. And it they, is. They had, I understand that over 50 astronauts were at the original revealing of that 10 years ago last wow. month. Been that and long. Uh, they were in tears. They yeah. were just, just in tears. Yeah. It's just something else. And the way it's cocked at an angle coming into landing and up in midair and everything, it's just really great. So uh, yeah, the, not to be missed. Well, here's one of our good good buddies that uh, we did an interview with last week. We aired it. We did it beforehand. And that would be uh, Mike Baker. There's Bakes. Uh Twice a pilot, twice a commander, and uh, love the stories he has to tell. Oh, yeah, he has a bunch of them, too. Yeah. Very, very good. Very knowledgeable, too. Yeah, these commanders and pilots, they have a mystique all their own. They they, they really do. They're, they usually uh, don't talk unless spoken to. Right, yep. Uh, but when once you get them going, they're, they're very informative. That's it. They want you to understand. Yeah. Marty, uh, in 1995, last week, uh, Bakes was the commander of the abort of uh, STS-68. And you and I have talked about these five pad aborts. And he was the commander of the last one. And we didn't even ask him about it. I didn't do my research. to. Uh, and Terry Wilcutt was his pilot on, that, on <laughs> no STS-68. Kidding. Wow. So I Small tried to world. ask Terry, you know, what they were thinking. But, you know, uh, he just said we were just going through the procedures. Right. You know, yeah. you're, just, you're just going through those papers. It's just there. a job. There, there's Terry Wilcutt there. Yeah. Pilot Terry. Command. Very nice guy. Yeah. He yeah. sat and talked with me for a good 10 minutes. And he didn't have to do that. He doesn't have to do that with any of them. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Well, what but kind of does. things are you asking him? Uh, we talked about uh, mostly SpaceX and the new ship that's going or trying to get up. Uh -huh. Starship. We talked about the what thrust. Do you think about and, that? Uh, now, I'm getting the feeling that most of these astronauts don't want to say a whole lot about it until it's proven, you know what I'm saying? But uh, we talked about the thrust and uh, the grids on it and, and the different things like that and how it comes back and lands and everything. And it was very, very informative. I'll tell you, Terry is very, very intelligent man. Oh, yeah, he is. Yes, no doubt. They're all, they're all, yeah. Uh, yeah. He has a way about him. And yeah. uh, he's, I think he's kind of charming, too. Yeah. He's, he's uh, watching the with point. the kids and yep. and everybody yep. uh, and Marty and I see a lot about that. Marty, yep. you can chime in any and I, I anytime think they you really, want to talk uh, about. We're gonna see a couple I more. I think they really there. appreciate it when, I mean, you know, because ninety percent of the questions they get are how do you go to the bathroom? You know what I'm saying? Right. And then, yeah. <laughs> and when you got somebody that's knowledgeable and knows what they're talking about and they're asking certain questions, these guys uh -huh. just light up. They and, do. And the, and the information is incredible. What, uh, who are some of the, I don't have pictures of them all, but of course, just that's all we have pictures of there, but who, uh, what other notables have you met? Have you met them uh, all here at the Space Center? Mostly at the Space Center. Uh, Elaine Collins, oh, I believe yes. her name is. I have her, and uh, I, I've i had breakfast with her, and I that was Collins, good she, times, yeah. What'd you think of her? Very, very knowledgeable, too. 
Yeah, have you read her book? No, that I haven't. Jonathan Ward's one of our museum partners and oh, yeah. he helped write her book. And, yeah, uh, I'll have to look uh, that up. Yeah, I, I've not read it either. It's uh, Breaking the Glass Ceiling. The, right. She's the first uh, pilot and then commander. And, right, yeah. Uh, any, any, anybody yeah. else you think of? Uh, not right off my head. Okay. I mean, I've got so many that it's hard to remember all right. their names. Well, who would you like to meet that you haven't met, John? Uh, Buzz, of course. Yeah. I have his autograph. Do you? Yes. Got um, one of our auctions, yep. maybe? Um, of course, the Russians. I've got... Uh, Yergi's autograph, and I have... Uh, Gagarin's? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I got... Uh, Leonov, the uh, uh, space walker, maybe? I'm not sure if I have him or not. Um, uh -huh. Well, you make sure your family knows you have those and what they are. Oh, so yeah. They don't, they don't throw think, them out for $2. They don't think the nothing day. about it, you know what I mean? Yeah, they don't, right. They're not on the no. Yeah, that's they're why you got to label this stuff. This yep. is my exactly. geeky stuff here yep. on there, but... Um, yep. uh, so what's uh, kind of in the future here? We all look at retirement and stuff uh, like that. Yeah. And get a little gray I'm hoping to be able to move down here. I would really like it. Be able to watch a rocket launch whenever mm -hmm. they go, because I would be there for every single one of them. Well, we certainly need docents and knowledgeable people like you here at the museum are, are always welcome yep. on there. Do you do much traveling? Uh, now, you're in New York, and that's south of uh, Buffalo, you said, Limestone. Right. Yeah. Uh, have you ever been to the uh, Cradle of Aviation there, Beth Page? No. Okay. No, I really very little traveling other than coming down here to see my grandkids and stuff yeah it's it's a nice i get to see them plus i get to come here and you know have a, have a lot of fun uh this museum's amazing and you yeah. people are real amazing good um i mean what, it's well worth the trip what Just kind of artifacts did you did you like seeing in our museum here? oh uh there's space suits there's shuttle parts uh my particular favorite is the one that blows the tank off of the shuttle the big bolt yeah yeah right yeah, yeah yeah you the, know the, and you're, you're thinking there. to yourself oh my god that you bolt's gotta be yeah that yeah, thing's gotta be the, six eight the inches thick. point of the external tank right beneath the cabin yeah that one point right there yeah, yeah we've got the actual bolt yeah and uh that, i'll show you on the amazing. video what it looks like when it separates right you just see a white little dot there right yeah but yeah yeah stuff like that oh it's incredible one of a kind incredible. no one else yep. has that that's right okay. you're right yep. we, uh, we, 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 yep. we, we, everything we, here is one of a kind exactly yeah, i mean your woman's the room for the women astronauts that's phenomenal we're very, hoping to have jasmine nice. up there uh friday morning i know oh, uh, nick uh nick uh enix our collection manager probably already made her plaque to put up there nice uh we love Very our nice. women's gallery 73 women all been in space we also honor some of the purdue suborbital ladies do, do you know john that all the three major centers of nasa are all run by women right now no kidding yes you've got uh wow. there's uh, a glass ceiling right there huh yeah, that's right that's right well, let's look at a, another little quick passion of yours here uh you're commanding a starship there yep. where's that I'm, I'm a trekkie that's out in uh las vegas at the big 50th anniversary there was uh i'm gonna guess and say six or seven thousand people there mm -hmm. it was a unforgettable experience basically wow. six or seven thousand people what yeah. is that that's uh every august it just happened uh i think this was the 57th altogether. wow uh and it just happened it's like august 3rd to the 6th or something like that but uh it's it's just an amazing experience if, if you like star trek that's the place to go Los Angeles Trek Convention. Huh? Yeah, no, this was Vegas. Oh, Vegas. Oh, Vegas. Yeah, yep. Vegas, Vegas. Yeah, I think I heard about STLV, that. STLV, they call it. All right. And there's your yard with yep, Darth this Vader. Is, this is down in Disney. My uh, niece, uh, her husband works for Disney, so we get to go to Disney every time we go there because it's free. Yeah, well, that's a good you know, reason. You can go in and, and do whatever you want. And uh, this was me meeting Darth Vader. And. Uh, he wasn't. He didn't have a whole lot of love. Uh, you're going to see in a couple of pictures down a, a Wookiee and a Wookiee that he gave me a big hug there. Yeah, I saw your picture on yeah. Facebook. Him he gave me a big hug. hug so I got a lot of love from the Wookiee, but not so much from Dark. Okay, I like the Wookiee. <laughs> uh, well, we're enjoying talking to you here. I hope Dave Stangy's enjoying that. Dave's up in uh, Michigan. 
uh, Carlton Bailey's local here, of course. Thanks for sharing your walkout pictures there, Carlton. Doug Forrest is in Los Angeles. You've seen his uh, pencil artwork mm -hmm. on here and yeah. Chris Callie. Yeah. We need to get some of Chris's artwork up, up behind our screen here one day. Cynthia Rossi's watching. She loves astronauts. Tom Usiak. Bill Whiting's watching. Bill, uh, you'll meet Bill one time in line out there when he comes back uh, when it starts, the leaves start falling, maybe up in Michigan. Neil 1030's watching, which I really think is Neil Young, but, uh, right. you know, we just hope. Not for sure, yeah, right? Right, right, <laughs> yeah. And uh, Marina, hello. You know a person named Marina? Nope. Oh, so this person named Marina, hello. Yeah. Marty's got a comment, sir. Yeah, Carlson uh, commented again. He said, uh, sorry, Ben's name is Ben Smegliski, if I pronounced that right. No, that's okay. I'll okay. talk to you later, yeah. Carlton. Yeah. And, Not uh, what I'm looking for. And All also, right. uh, he says, sorry about the name slip. Let Mark know I can't find anything about his slip for tonight's launch. Still, as of now, scheduled for 847. Good. And Space Monkey is asking... We will be selling shirts for Crew 7. All right. You can number. Tell us where you're going to be setting, selling Crew 7 shirts, Marty. We're going to be setting up at uh, Space View Park. If you walk down the Broad Street, which is a broad street, we're right at the very end, right in front of the park. All right. We'll be there from about 1230 till probably a half hour after lunch. All right. Do you have coins, too? Any kind of colored coins? Oh, yeah, we have uh, uh, painted coins, and they have five silver coins. Great. All right. We also have some decals and a few other little knickknacks. What are we selling the T-shirts for? $20. $20. All right. A Jefferson. That's reasonable. You've yeah. got yours on there. Yep. Show the it's back a, of it there. It's a beautiful T-shirt. Absolutely. There we go. Crew 7 there. Just like the thing. It is gorgeous. Yep. Yeah. yeah it is. And commercial crew, commercial on, the crew on the front. I That's like my that. first one. On there. So appreciate that. Also, while uh, we're talking some space stuff here, uh, well, let's get let's get you out to the... Uh, let's show you what it looks like out there, eating a nice hamburger yeah. or some wings or something at one of the nice restaurants. And you see this go by. Yeah. It's mind-blowing. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you right now, especially when they're all burned up. Their legs are out, and then uh, they bring them, they take them off the barge and set them up, and then they lay each one of them right there in this picture. You can see the guy on the uh, lift, and what they're doing is drawing the legs back up so that it can be laid down to be transported for refurbishment. Yeah. Which is absolutely yeah. Just, just beautiful sight. Several of them have been launched fifteen or sixteen times. Yeah, I think uh, this one here particularly was the uh, this was the ninth launch. The soot on the mistaken. side of them is what's cool. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, well, it's you're going to see you're going to see uh, Friday morning. That one's going to be shiny because it's brand new. Okay. So, is that, are they using yeah, a new one for brand that? new one? Okay. Yep. And uh, uh, it's going to be shiny, but when it comes back. It's going to look something like this one. Though it's on the pad out there at LZ1, yeah, like you yep. said there. So. I think they're test firing it tonight. Okay. Either tonight or tomorrow night, or they're, they're doing a static fire. Well, we're looking forward to that. Those nine Merlin engines certainly are an engineering uh, marvel at this oh, stage. God. The Most the reliable right now. 200-some launches times nine. Yeah. And, only a couple of them have ever failed. Yeah. Uh, but but bringing it back is the whole thing, Thank man. Are oh, you yeah. kidding me? Yeah. Just, why right. haven't we been doing this for decades? How about you know? it? Yeah, that's I mean, exactly uh, it. Why it did took, it take so Well, it took so a long. year to waste and uh, to keep. I mean, he, the first 18 failed. Right, and yeah. And then finally. Yeah, they cost him. He was stuff. almost on bankrupt. Yes. They were almost bankrupt, yeah. and they brought it around. Now look at them. That's They're right. leading. They're leading the launches. They're putting up more. SpaceX is putting up more by themselves than anybody else in the world combined. That's a big, big statistic right there. It is. Really it is. big. It is. It's amazing. Yeah. Just amazing. Uh, and not just on our space coast here that's getting noisy every week. With these rockets, but uh, Vandenberg, Vandenberg uh, doing dude, it too. Uh, is really yep. stepping up Vandenberg yep. out there. Yep. They're almost doing one a week. So, uh, uh, and uh, we have a crew uh, that uh, two rockets on opposite sides of the world will launch to the International Space Station this week. We've talked about 
the uh, uh, crew seven and to replenish the expedition 69 crew and segue into expedition 70. Uh, another launch is in Kazakhstan that Tuesday night is going to haul supplies to the International Space Station for these crews up there. Uh, so we look forward to that. Also, I will be uh, in use. We talked about this earlier. Uh, how about India trying to land on the moon? That is incredible, isn't it? And that's going to be them tomorrow. so much luck. Yes. Tomorrow morning, the landing is predicted to be 8.34 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So they Chandran 3, Chandra Yan, Chandra with Y-A-A-N, Dash three will take you to their live website. Uh, I think about a quarter after seven is when they're going to activate it. I got gotcha. you. Eastern uh, daylight. I'll be watching time. that. That'll be an so, excellent uh, watch. Yes, they're apparently got going to show the landing live or whatever they can show. I don't know if it's they incredible. got GoPros on the side of this vehicle, but they failed a little over four years ago uh, in the Soviet Union or Soviet Union, Russia. Slap me, Russia failed. <laughs> right. Uh, yesterday yeah, luna luna 25 so, uh, as, as a as a space geek what do you think about the whole artemis program going to the moon i think it's fantastic uh-huh i i really wish that they would have had a parallel with the shuttle where they would have kept you know going to the moon mm -hmm. because uh not that we wasted our time i'm not insinuating that whatsoever because the shuttle was one of the greatest greatest inventions in all of mankind and it put us up to where we needed to be yeah and got the station going and of course the station's getting old now it's getting pretty yes, old. yes it is old it's People over like 20 years old it, you yeah. know but it's uh it's had its day you okay. know and it's done a lot of stuff but it's the next step that's going to be really exciting really exciting <laughs> when they land on the moon it's going to be crazy yes it's gonna well, be nuts well i hope we're around for that i hope i'm around for that but we're looking at probably 2026 that's not too far yeah. off but uh, uh, they slip by real quick it anymore, will slip don't by they? real quick is right yeah and we're looking for a a, a year from november for crew uh two artemis two to go uh, and pass the moon yeah so, i'm gonna uh, be here for that one too well you're gonna be here for a lot of launches and yeah. we invite you back to stay curious but also we've made a friend of you in the museum here yep and uh i thought you did great we enjoyed talking to you today i appreciate it is there it. anything you'd like to share about your love for space to our viewers out there just John? just always keep looking up always be looking up at the stars because that's where we're headed all right well, thank you, sir, for thank you. enjoying it. You did awesome. We enjoy, enjoyed your uh, uh, enthusiasm and so yeah. forth. And I was kind of nervous about it. Well, you did great. <laughs> Marty, anything else over there? Nope. All right. Good Streamlabs show today. Thank you, Trekkie Techie Jessica Galloway, for getting your name up there, spelled good and everything like that. And I'm going to give you a Rocket Hobo patch from great. our lost friend there for you to yep. enjoy. That's amazing. And uh, well, Place of honor. Good. Well, you're welcome. And uh, we're going to honor Ozzy. We miss him every launch. Uh, but uh, we're going to ask you, John uh, Borelli, to watch tomorrow's show because we're going to have Mikey Haddad, our payload specialist on here. And uh, he's going to bring uh, uh, Tracy. Uh, oh, what's Tracy's last name with him? Uh, and they're going to talk about the um, MLPs, the the uh, the Leonardo and, right. and uh, Raphael right. in Columbus that were the uh, the ESA cargo and then more that they took up there. I got you. And we're going to talk about that for the shuttles of the month of August. Mikey Haddad will be here. And we look always look forward to Mikey giving us a program. Uh, then we're going to have next Monday will be Nick Thomas, the astronaut wrangler. Right. Always does a show each month with us. We really appreciate Nick sharing his insight and, and his love for astronauts uh, on there. In efforting also probably Tuesday, we'll have a Terry White on. Talk to Terry. And Terry is, of course, our garage manager for the shuttles oh, and those orbital processing facilities. So efforting a lot of interviews. That's why we love having john on here we love talking to you and uh, whether you're a, a space uh, geek or a space engineer 
you're welcome to share your story here on Stay Curious. So until tomorrow when we bring you some more shuttle payload information, I'm Mark Marquette saying we can't wait to see you again to what? To bridge the space between us.